Hey, my name is Jared Moon, and I'm part of a group of underground athletes you've probably never even heard of before. We don't rely on fancy equipment for training, and most of us don't even have gym memberships. In fact, our motivation comes from within. You see, we have jobs, families, and responsibilities, but we still have big goals, and they aren't getting achieved at a global gym. For that reason, we have to do things differently. Our training has to be smarter. We don't have every piece of equipment known to man or a ton of time to train, and we don't need it because we are achieving amazing things without it. So how do we do it? If you ask your average personal trainer or gym goer, they'd call us crazy. Yet we're seeing results better than most every single day. And it's happening by blending mental training with physical training and becoming an athlete. What we call, and welcome to, Garage Gym Athlete. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. My name is Jared Moon, and with me is Joe. What's up, Joe? Was that a question? You're not sure that Joe? I'm with you? <laughs> are you? Are you here today? Yeah, he's here. Hey, yes, I am here for season three. And Keith, what's up, man? Hello, how are you guys doing? Doing well, man, and uh, yeah, welcome to season three. Season three of the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Really excited to be kicking things off with you this morning, and so I... I can, I guess I can officially announce it on the podcast now. So Keith has been with us for a long time, but we started this new thing where uh, we're sponsoring the other guy athletes. So athletes within our community who do events, do cool things. And Keith is one that we actually selected to be an EO3 athlete this year because he's been crushing it for a long time and has a lot of cool uh, events planned and everything else. So Keith, congratulations on making it to one of being one of our first ever sponsored athletes and uh, welcome to season three, man. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to representing Garage Gym Athlete, you know, having a chance to talk to other athletes at some of the events I go to and tell them about my experience and, you know, hopefully get them on board. Awesome, man. Looking forward to it. Well, give us a quick introduction, uh, who you are, what you do, and how you train, man. Okay. Uh, so, obviously, I'm Keith. Uh, I'm 40 years old. Uh, I'm a husband. I'll be married six years this summer. Uh, have two young kids, have a boy and a girl, uh, almost four and one and a half. Uh, I'm a manager for an entertainment news agency here in Southern California. And I'm also a uh, volunteer athletic coordinator for Team Red, White, and Blue, which is a volunteer organization. And um, up until about two weeks ago, I was training in my garage gym, but we moved. So now I'm training in our condominium association gym, and uh, I strictly just follow the uh, Garage Gym Athlete End of Three Fitness program. Awesome, man. And uh, how has the transition been from true Garage Gym Athlete to condominium uh, gym? Not bad. There's been a few things I have to modify. Uh, you know, the equipment's different. All of my equipment that I had, you know, that I was used to is all in storage, Um and there's some things here uh, that, you know, I'll be able to show you around, but there's some things here that, you know, I'm just kind of modifying, trying to figure out, uh, you know, how to use them or, you know, how to kind of work around them. Um, and also just a new location. It's about a you know, two to three minute walk to the gym. So I've kind of <laughs> got to figure out my morning plan a little bit differently. So I leave myself enough time to get into the gym and actually have enough time to train. Yeah, that two to three minute commute is a little bit longer than your two to three second <laughs> exactly. commute that you had previously. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. And so what was the big, uh, you know, reason behind becoming a garage gym athlete? Yeah. So for me, I uh, probably back in 2012, I think it was, I joined a local CrossFit box and it was great. Um, but the one thing I was having a lot of trouble with was making the um, start time for the training, right? So, uh, it would start at, I think 7 AM and that was tough for me to make. Um, just because at one point it became, we were living right down the street and it was just a walk up the street, but then we moved about five miles away. So that turned into a 15, 20 minute drive. Then we ended up having kids. <laughs> so then you got that, that kind of added pressure of having to, you know, get out of the door, to get there in time. And I'm the kind of person who likes to be on time. And I'm also the kind of person who doesn't like to leave early. So just that kind of added stress. So 
after a while, I started to realize, like, you know, I think maybe it's better I start to set up my own garage gym, give myself the opportunity at least to work out on days where, you know, maybe the kids are up early and I can't quite get out the door on time. You know, I'll still get out there and, you know, work out for 20 minutes or something like that and just kind of started to evolve from there. Gotcha, man. And uh, so what what did you find the the biggest transition being, you know, going from CrossFit Box to Garage Gym Athlete? What were some of the adjustments you had to make or maybe in equipment, programming, mindset, anything really? Definitely, I think uh, finding a program that worked right for me. Uh, for a while, I was trying to kind of just do – my own program, you know, kind of come up with stuff on my own stuff that seemed interesting and challenging. Um, then I found a couple other, um, online, you know, organizations that I paid for some programming for, but it just didn't really click. It wasn't anything. I was having a hard time sticking with it. And, um, you know, prior to joining CrossFit in 2012, I honestly had never really lifted weights ever in my entire life. So I didn't really have like a, um, you know, extensive kind of knowledge of, you know, training. And so I'd get some of these programs and I'd kind of just be looking at them on paper, but there was really no, there was no demos. There wasn't a lot of explanation. And I was kind of always like, I don't even know if I'm doing this right. And then I finally found into three fitness and it was just like, man, this is perfect. Um, you know, the, the, the choices between the programs, um, the amount of explanation and detail that you put into it, with the video demos just made it easy. Cause then I could say like, all right, what exactly is Jared talking about here? You know, watch the, watch the demo, maybe, you know, go to one of the online communities, ask a question or something like that. And I'm good to go. That's awesome, man. And that's uh yeah, that's something we've been trying to provide as limit as many questions as possible by over, over teaching and uh, over briefing our athletes. Uh, and so give us a walk around where you're at right now. So if you're sure. listening, uh, so some people are only listening, so try and call things out when you see it. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, then you can actually see Keith uh, give us a tour of his condominium gym. Clearly, sure, nobody wakes okay. up early there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm usually in here by myself, which is fantastic. I love that. Uh, so just got a little bit of a, a bike over here. It doesn't turn on, but you know, it's, it's something you can use. Uh, got this multi-function weight machine, which I have not gotten on yet, just because it doesn't really you know fit the programming that I'm doing <laughs> right now uh have this uh like assisted Ooh, dip assisted pull up thing here um I use it for dips and pull ups although it, everything's set out kind of wide so I, I was gonna the, say those dip bars look a little wide yeah it's are. pretty wide so actually one of the guys on the online forums had suggested I think I'm gonna try to buy a just an over the door pull up bar yeah. And leave it down here, and hopefully nobody confiscates it. Um, they've got, let's see, hopefully you guys can see everything. Got a Smith machine here. Um, got a lot of dumbbells, which is great. Nice. Uh, Something I don't really got, have any of. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's two two racks of dumbbells. Wow. Um, got a rack here with a barbell yeah, and iron honest. plates. And back in the corner, like a preacher curl set up and then a um hopefully you guys can see everything and then just pec deck or something yeah pec deck and then this thing here this like 1950s rocky sit-up machine thing <laughs> i've actually been using that as my toes to bar nice kind of situation okay. without having a pull-up bar um and then you know just a couple benches here and a back extension and some uh medicine balls so it, a lot of equipment and actually upstairs on the second floor is kind of the cardio room. And the thing I'm most pumped about, cause I haven't had one or access to one in a couple of years is the concept two rower. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's great. Get some serious rowing done. And, uh, what, so yep. what was your garage gym set up before you moved to this gym? Right. So my garage gym set up prior to was at my house. Um, I had a rogue S two squat rack with a rogue barbell. I think it was, I think it was called the beater barbell possibly um had bumper plates from rage that i had picked up from dick sporting goods um had a uh, on it battle rings you know it's, it's essentially it's kind of like rings but a rope um a handful of different you know rogue like uh, mobility bands uh i think uh, four different kettlebells uh, um 
several different dumbbells, uh, had a bench for doing bench press, which I also kind of would lay a, a piece of uh, wood over top and use that as my box jump. I would secure it down and also use that as my box jump and uh, a slam ball and uh, like an ab wheel. And that's pretty, that was pretty much it, but a, a good amount of equipment. I could get, you know, everything done in that little space. Yeah, man. It sounds like you had a pretty good setup and uh, well, I, may, I don't, I don't know if I missed it or we just haven't discussed it yet. So what'd you do with that stuff? Is it storage or, um, did you sell it or what? Right. So it's in storage. Um, I have a, this is my master plan here. We'll see if it actually works. I'm new to the HOA. So I'm going to hopefully try to make a couple HOA meetings, figure out the, uh, the politics and the hierarchy and, you know, start to try to figure out a way to get my equipment into this, uh, condominium gym. And honestly, like, I've had that equipment now for so many years. I would, if I could keep using it because it's such high quality, I would just donate it to the HOA. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if they'll let me get it in here or not. If they don't, then I'll, you know, I guess I'll be parting ways with it. You just need to have like a graphic with like the pec deck only doing this and then the barbell <laughs> circle the whole person. Right. Well, dude, technically yeah, you have a backup garage gym because if you're telling me that you have a full set of garage gym equipment in a storage unit boom that's a gym right there <laughs> oh right well so um basically we don't have like an actual garage for our condominium it's like we have a carport yeah. and we got lucky enough that we have like a um there's a storage like you know kind of um box essentially in the carport nothing where you could actually set anything up it's just you could store stuff so um yeah, maybe it will come to that later. Maybe I end up having to go and rent like a storage unit. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you can still break out your barbell and do your iron mile. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have actually worked out in a storage unit before. Um, it's fun. It uh, <laughs> keeps things interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. So uh, let's uh, let's talk about the struggles uh, that I mean, let's say the biggest struggle you've had because switching from crossfit gym to i don't know coaches yelling at you friends motivating you to primarily being alone training whether that's in the condominium gym which you are 100 percent alone right now and uh it previously in your garage gym what's that what was that like for you what was the big challenge there i think the big challenge initially was um feeling confident in the program that i was using and also feeling confident in knowing that i was doing the um the program or even like some of the movements correctly so like i said i just you know i didn't really have like a um a long history of weightlifting um and i didn't really have a long history of coaching i mean luckily i feel lucky for me that i did have a few years at the crossfit box because i did get you know i had some really great coaches there and i did get to learn the basics and understand like you know where i should be position wise um but then, you know, you, time kind of goes on and you know you maybe are forming some bad habits. Um, so that was probably the toughest part for me. I, I actually enjoy kind of working out alone. Um, I like the solitude. I, I struggled at the CrossFit box because I'm naturally competitive. Um, and I definitely was letting my ego and my competitiveness get in the way of kind of like, how I was feeling that day or how I was feeling with a particular movement. And one thing I noticed is when I switched to my garage gym, I actually was, that gave me the opportunity really to kind of like listen to my body more and kind of listen to how I was really feeling and, and kind of, Hey, if I'm feeling great, I'm going all out today. Or if I'm not feeling too good in one way or another, like, okay, maybe I'm dialing it back or maybe I'm, you know, kind of modifying that movement or something where in the past I probably wouldn't have done that just because of the group setting. Um, so, yeah, I guess, you know, those are some of the challenges. Those are also some of the pluses, I suppose. Yeah. So you got yeah. a little bit more tailored to how you're feeling as opposed to running off someone else's, uh, schedule or competition or whatever. Yeah. I think, yeah. uh, pride can be one of the strongest assets and also one of the biggest weaknesses that people have. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, you know, I'm, cause I'm a huge, uh, like data junkie just on myself, like tracking numbers and things. And uh, I get questions sometimes on why, why that is like why track as much as I do. And the, I think the real reason is because I've trained alone for such a long time that 
the, I need those. I need the numbers to really know if I'm pushing myself like, OK, what's my heart rate during this one? What's my pacing on the rower? Uh, because I feel like if you don't have, you know, some way to handle yourself when you're training alone, you know, you're not going to see progress. And uh, I think like, kind of what you're saying is getting away from anyone else's schedule or their fitness level and just really focusing on on your own. But continually seeing progress, I think, is very important if you're going to be a garage gym athlete. Right. Yeah. All right, man. So clearly you like it. You've been doing it for a long time, but let's get to uh, some of these more fun questions. Uh, what's the okay. hardest workout you've ever done? Okay. So initially when I thought of this, I thought for sure I was going to end up looking through my logs and, or just, you know, so I was going to come up with something with thrusters for sure. But then I was looking through my log and I, I went back and I thought, Oh, here it is. The open workout 13.1 for me, just had kind of left a scar upon my memory. It's, it was essentially, it was 40, it was for time. There was a 17 minute time cap. It was 40 burpees, then 30 snatches at 75 pounds, oh, yeah, then the 30 burpees. And then I think thir- oh, you always kept the snatches at 30, but the weight kept going up. So yeah, I, I made it into the 135 and I never got past there. But it was just, I was wrecked. And um, so I'll put that, that one, I can remember very clearly. It's like I, I can, I'm back in the gym when I think of that one. So I'll put that one as the hardest. I, I know the snatches went all the way up to, I think, 210. And so kudos to anybody that got all the way up there. <laughs> yeah, I think, dude, that's what the those CrossFit open workouts are, are really good at, is just being terribly hard and uh, awful. You know, there's not there's not yeah. a single one where you're like, ah, oh, it's okay. You know, especially if you really no. push yourself. Yeah, yeah. All right, dude. In your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? I think, you know, seeking out opportunities for new experiences, whether that's, you know, and and new experiences where you don't know the outcome for sure, how you're going to perform. So whether that's in you know the physical capacity or the mental capacity. You know, just, you know, looking for new things that you can try and you're not quite sure, you know, how you're going to do, you know, if you're going to have a, you know, a really good time in a race or, you know, you're going to end up finishing last or, you know, even for me, like this here today, like the podcast, this is new for me. It's exciting. Uh, hopefully it's going well. And um, so far, so you know, so I think. <laughs> Yeah, I think seeking out those kind of things and always exposing yourself to those things kind of helps you build up your resilience and your confidence. Yeah, I think, and there's been a lot of research on um, the just your your brain having to experience new things, like what you're saying, on you know making you smarter, making you more resilient and uh, more intelligent. Really, is just is a thing more creative. There's a lot of research on that now, uh, on the better humanology podcast. I've actually talked to some guys about that. We had some neuro scientist on, and he was talking about how we were talking about neuroplasticity, but he's really like, he's like, you don't need to overcomplicate it, man. Just go do new things. Like go, go work in a coffee shop here this day, and then go outside and walk, walk to a tree you've never been to this day. And it's like all these new experiences like can really change uh, how your brain functions. I think that's really cool and really great advice, man. All right. If you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? It's easy. It's the, the barbell with a set of plates. Awesome. Without a doubt. Yeah. So I guess this is going to be a little bit different, but, uh, if your HOA, uh, says, Hey, we're going to grant you one piece of equipment for the, the this gym, what would it be? Well, I mean, you know, I've got the Concept 2 rower now, so that's fantastic. It, it would have been that in the past had you asked me at my actual, you know, garage at the house. Um, I think, honestly, for me, as a proper pull-up bar, um, because I love doing pull-ups. I like doing stuff off the bar. So, you know, hanging like a set of rings off of there or, you know, toes to bar. You know, there's just so much you could do with a pull-up bar um, and not having one that I can really – um, you know, use, I, I feel a little bit, uh, like I'm missing out. So there's actually one thing I was going to say is <clears throat> what I used to do is if you put the Smith machine all the way to the top, you can use that as your bar. 
And you can also hang hang the rings from the rig of the Smith machine. Okay, there we go. Look at yeah, that. so I'll have to try that next. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a pull-up bar is really important because, to be honest, in my history of being a garage gym athlete, I haven't had great pull-up bar situations. Like, when I lived in Florida, I had to hang it off of, like, these straps, like a, a metal bar off these straps, and so it was, like, it would swing, and then I'd say for 75% of my – garage gym athlete career if you will i've uh had that yoke so i've been doing fat bar pull-ups for like a majority of my my training life and uh for three years when i when i had my set up my rig in texas i had a normal pull-up bar and it was awesome and right now yeah. I'm, I'm back to just a fat bar pull-up and uh i'm like man i gotta i gotta get a normal pull, pull-up bar installed here it's it's really important yeah it's funny how you get attached to these uh pieces of equipment oh yeah there's uh yeah and it's never it's your your garage gym's never complete either. I think like like right, right now I have all the things that I need, but I'm like, you know what? I think I might sell this Airdyne and get a new Airdyne. It's like, yeah. What's the <laughs> what's the real reason behind? I don't know. It just sounds like a good idea. I want to try a different Airdyne out. Yeah. All right, man. What is the the best advice you have for all the garage gym athletes out there listening to this? Yeah, I think. Um establishing routines that allow you to be consistent with your training. Um, you know, kind of looking at the small things and even the big things that allow you to consistently get in the gym and train. So, you know, are you getting enough sleep? You know, what's your end of the night routine like? And, you know, how are you getting yourself to bed so that you get enough sleep? So you have enough recovery. Are you drinking enough water? Are you, are you eating healthy? Like if you're, you know, if you're not really eating healthy, are you working on eating healthier so that you can perform better in the gym? Are you, you know, are you looking at your programming for the next day or the next couple days and looking and seeing like, okay, well, what, what don't I have equipment for? What do I need to modify? Or what do I need to, you know, what do I need to go on to the form and ask guys like, Hey, you know, how do I do this? Or how should I modify this? You know, kind of planning ahead so that, you can leave yourself time to get in the gym and kind of know how you're going to work through the program for that day. Um, also I think, you know, important is scheduling your day. And as part of scheduling your day is, you know, scheduling in your training into that day and, you know, kind of making it, I think you've even said like non-negotiable, obviously there's, you know, family and things that, you know, would come up that end up, you know, maybe sidetracking your, your training, but for every, everything else, pretty much, you know, making it non-negotiable so that at the end of the day, like a lot of the things that you're doing throughout the day end up kind of feeding your consistency of training, right? Like the consistency is important, being able to get into the gym and train, you know, day after day and, you know, feel good, be able to recover correctly. Um, you know, taking, yeah, taking your rest and recovery seriously and, um, you know, make it more of a marathon than a sprint, right? Like, you know, to be, be doing this training for not just like a month, but for, you know, a year, you know, on and on. Yeah, man, I think that's, that's great advice. It's interesting, right? The, the culture, I don't, I guess America has of like fitness health, uh, is just being 100% optional is like. If you have time for it, you can work out. And, and I'm not saying you have to be on this like crazy training schedule or anything like that, but just like it's always marginalized and pushed to the side for is as an if I have time for that activity, uh, whether that's walking or doing whatever. And it's just you have so many other mandatory things in your life, but very few people view, view fitness and health as one of those th- those things. And it's it's weird, weird, weird. Right. Awesome, Keith. Well, it's been awesome having you on. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast, kickoff season three, man. Thanks uh, thanks for being on. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And Jared, honestly, like, thank you for the community that you've built here with Into 3 Fitness. It's, it's awesome. It's very uplifting and positive, and I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that.